Well, hello, and welcome back to The Coachman. For today's reading, we're going to be heading up to Canada, and I'm sure this is going to be a pretty interesting story because uh, it's actually called The Tobacco Fairy from the Blue Hills. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've read pretty much a good, I've read a good amount of stories, and whenever I, you know, tobacco, foothills, or the hills, I don't know, I always just think of like, all right, this is going to be some pretty... A pretty interesting story. So with that being said, let's get on into it. A man and his wife and two children were living long ago on the shores of a lake surrounded by large trees deep in the Canadian forest. They lived very happily together and as game was plentiful, when they say game, they mean like like food, basically like, you know, deer, bison, fox, meat, basically. And that's what game. They wanted for nothing. As the children grew up, they became each day more beautiful and gentle until the old woman of the tribe said, they are too good and lovely for this world. Their home is surely elsewhere in the West. Before they grew to maturity, a cruel plague spread over the land and carried them off with its ravages. Their mother was the next to go, slowly growing weaker and wasting away before the eyes of her husband and who was very, very powerless to save her. The man was now left all alone upon the earth. The joy of his life had gone with his wife and children, and he went about in great loneliness and sorrow. Life was long to him and dreary, and often he wished that he too was dead. Now, I got to be honest. I'm going to stop it here real quick. Not to be, you know, kind of, not to be too, like, dreadful, right? Or Debbie Downer or whatever you want to call it, Moan and Myrtle. But honestly, if you've ever been somewhere by yourself, like, far away from your family and really no friends, like, let's say if you lived in another country, that feeling that this guy's feeling of, like, not being dead necessarily, but just of, like, all right, what am I doing? What do I have to move on for it's kind of the same. You know what I mean? It's different, yes, but it's the same. So, like, for me, like, living off abroad in, you know, in China when I moved away, it wasn't like I wanted to die. But when things happen, like, they go bad, you're like, what am I doing? And it starts to creep in. So, I couldn't imagine, like, your family passes away. And you're just like, all right, what am I doing? So, I just wanted to add that in there that I, I definitely understand the feeling, but... Again, you just have to, you know, pick your head up and keep moving. Although difficult, it's just one thing. So, um, and and here it is. But at least he roused himself and said, "I will go about doing good. I will spend my life helping others, and perhaps in that way, I can find peace." That's a beautiful way to do it. So he worked hard and did all the good he could for the weaker and the poor people of his tribe. He was held in high esteem by all the people of the village, and in their affection for him, they all called him grandfather. Yo, that's sick. That's almost like being called Unk. Yo, what up, Unk? You know what I mean? That's kind of like, the, I, I would say that's equivalent. He grew to be very old. And because of his good deeds, he found great happiness, but he was still very solitary. In the days and evenings were long and lonely, and as he grew older, and his work grew less. He found it hard to pass away the time, for he could only sit alone and dream of his vanished youth and of his absent and of his absent friends. Now that would be getting dark when your friends start passing away and you're just like, wait, I'm starting to lose people instead of like gaining things. One day he sat thinking by the lake. Many people of the village were around him. But as usual, he sat alone. Suddenly, a large flock of birds, looking like great black clouds, came flying from the blue hills in the distance toward the shore of the lake. They wheeled and circled about and hovered long over the trees, uttering strange cries. The people have never before seen such large birds, and they were much afraid and said, They are not ordinary creatures. They foreshadow some strange happening. I ain't gonna lie. 
if I saw this for real, for real, and I live up in Canada, I'm bringing out the 12 gauge. Yeah, I'm shoot, I'm starting to lay out buck shots and just start scattering. You know what I mean? That's just me. I mean, you see a huge cloud of birds. I'm like, all right, no, 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 no. We're not going out like that. You get ready to get busy. Suddenly, one of the birds fluttered for an instant and fell slowly to earth with an arrow in its breast. No one in the village had shot at the flock. If I were there, that would have been me. And where the arrow had come from, no man knew. Probably from me reading this story. Yes, I would be the one. The mystery frightened the people still still more, and they looked at the old man for counsel, for they knew that he was very wise. The fallen bird lay fluttering on the ground, seemingly in pain. The other birds circled about it for a short time, uttering loud cries. Then they screamed and called to each other and flew back to the distant blue mountains, leaving the fallen bird behind them with the arrow sticking in its breast. Man, okay, so these birds, I can tell, they're not black. I mean, because you don't leave any man behind. I mean, you got you got you to, there are no lone soldiers, you know what I'm saying? These definitely are marine birds because it's like, yeah, we, we carry our own. All right. So that's sad. But I feel for the bird, you know. Uh, the old man was not frightened by the sight. He said, I will go to the stricken bird. Perhaps I can heal its wounds. But the people in great fear said, do not, grandfather. The bird will do you harm. But the old man answered. It can do no harm to me. My work is ended and my life is almost done. My sky is dark, for I am full of sorrow, and with me it is already the twilight of time. I am alone in the world, for my kindred have gone. I am not afraid of death, for to me it would be very welcome. What matters, what matters it if I should die? And... He went to the stricken bird to see if he could help it out. And I got to say, I like this dude. Grandfather realized, like, look, I might be going down, yeah? But I can still give. And that's just, like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's a great way to live life. So, I like this. As he went along, his path suddenly grew dark. But as he drew near... A bright flame suddenly swept from the sky to a place where the bird was lying. There was a flash of fire, and when the old man looked, he saw that the bird had been completely burned. I ain't gonna lie, if that was me, I'd be like, all right, what's going on? I come over to help, and now all of a sudden the bird is like completely just charred. When he came to where it had lain, Nothing but black ashes remained. He stirred up the ashes with his stick, and lying in the center, he found a large living coal of fire. As he looked at it, in a twinkling, it disappeared. And in its place was a strange little figure, like a little man, no bigger than his thumb. Hello, grandfather, it called. Do not strike me, for I have been sent to help you. See, this is where I would look at this, yeah? And I think that, like, if I were to look at life, I think some people, you know, I think good things happen to those who are willing to, like, go through, like, the mud to say. Like, this guy was like, all right, you know what? This is scary, but I'm going to go through the mud because, you know what? I believe I can help. And all of a sudden, like, some genie or whatever, it's willing to help him. That's pretty sick. Who are you? Asked the old man. I am one of the little people from the distant blue hills, said the tiny boy. And the old man knew that the little fellow was one of the strange fairy people of the mountains whom he had once heard heard of. What do you want? He asked. I have been sent to you. I have sent you. I have been sent to you with a precious gift, answered the little man. 
The old man wondered greatly, but he said nothing. Then the fairy from the Blue Hills said, You are old and lonely. You have done many noble deeds, and you have always gone about bringing good, good to others. In that way, you have found peace. And because of your good life, I have been sent to bring you more contentment. Your work is done, but your life is not yet ended. And you have still a long time to dwell upon the earth. You must live out your mortal course. You are longing always for your dead wife and children, and you are often thinking about your youth. And with you the days are long, and time hangs heavy. But I have been sent to you with a gift that will help you pass the time more pleasantly. Then the little man gave him a number of small seeds and said, Plant these at once, here, in the ashes from which I have just risen. The old man did as he said, as he was told. At once the seed sprouted and great leaves grew from them. And soon the place where the bird had been burned up became a large field of tobacco. The fairy then gave him a large pipe and said, Dry these leaves and place them in this pipe and smoke them. You have great contentment. And when you have nothing to do, it will help you pass the time away. And when no one is with you, it will be a companion. And it will bring you many dreams of the future and of the past. And when the smoke curls upwards, it will have for you many visions of those you loved. And you will see their faces in the smoke as you sit alone in the twilight. I got to say, this little dude sounds like he's the dope man. Just spreading good wills of all that fine chibo. Well, let's see what happens. The old man was very thankful for the fairy's gift. But the little man said, teach other old men how to use it so that they too may possess it and enjoy it. Then the fairy quickly disappeared, going towards the distant blue hills. And he was never seen in the village again. And with his pipe and his tobacco, the old man went back to his dreaming with more contentment than before. In this way, tobacco was brought to the Indians in the old days. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. Honestly, I enjoyed it myself. And it's always cool to learn a little little something new. But I hope you have a good day. Hope you have a wonderful week. And until next time, take care.